presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Let's go to uh, John in Orlando. John, what's going on, brother? Good afternoon, Tom. How are you? I'm doing great, man. Yourself? Good, good. I want to tell you, I've been listening to you since your radio days back in 99. Appreciate what you guys do. But what I really enjoy that you brought back to Lord, this guy is as smart as a whip. I, I am so he, happy for that feedback. Yeah, because he's one of a kind. He's got to be the number one market timer. I'm telling you, it's like he calls it really, really he, good. He does. I really appreciate the feedback, man. Yes, yes. Now, Tom O'Brien. <laughs> Welcome, folks. Tom O'Brien, he is off today. Tommy O'Brien filling in, looking forward to an action-packed hour. Pretty cool. As I greet you, on 3 p.m. on January 29th, folks, we kick off the hour. We have markets at all-time highs with the markets catching a bid. Right at 3 o'clock, as I came on the air, we have the S&Ps making 25 points to the upside. Now, 25 points right now, that's only half a percent because this thing's sitting near 5,000. Nonetheless, you see the acceleration right at 3 o'clock. We push higher to the tune of about half a percent. NASDAQ 100, you're up by eight tenths percent. Now, not quite over those price levels you had on Wednesday. We come into a week that it doesn't get much bigger for tech earnings. We'll go over some of that this hour. Hour, You get the Dow. I mean, look, Dow just popped 100 points. You're up 126. That's a third of a percent. You get the Russell up by 1.2 percent. Now, the Russell, well off all-time highs, man. You're still talking about almost what? 400, 500 points, 25% off the all-time high is pretty interesting when you look at it in that context. Bitcoin, back to a short-term time frame. We trade higher to 43,450. When we have some action in yields, we have some action in the dollar right now. We have yields dropping. Why not just jump to it? We have crude down a dollar at 76.92. We jump to the 10-year. Whoop. ZN. You have higher price, lower yield. A little bit of a pullback there from that first move, though. Look at that. We made it all the way to 111.22. Eh, two ticks. We're back a bit. Higher price, lower yield. The 10-year sitting at about 4.07. 4.07 is what's happening right now on the 10-year. You jump over to the dollar. Complete reversal from what happened earlier today. Right? It was all strength earlier this morning. And you got to keep your eye on these relationships. Doesn't mean it's always going to happen. But look at the action near the open, man. Something had to reverberate here, folks, okay? When I came on the air at 9 o'clock, what was it, 2056? And I'm saying, hey, you know, it's interesting that it's going both ways because you had dollar strength. And at 9 o'clock, you had gold sitting there when gold when dollars at 103.64. Nonetheless, you accelerate 103.82. These are dramatic moves ahead of a Fed decision on Wednesday. We get jobs numbers on Friday. We get many of the tech companies with their earnings coming out this week. You jump over to Apple shares. Apple, quite the acceleration this morning, 189.58, just like that. Apple within 76 pennies. Google, 154.81. Google up about two-thirds percent. Microsoft, biggest company in the world right now, up 1.2 percent. Adding to those gains, you jump over to AMD. AMD, down about 56 pennies right now. Their, their numbers this week as well, 176.74. We jump over to Meta. Look at this thing, man. All-time highs. Meta up by 2.1%. $8.36, man. I think I pulled this up this morning. If I didn't, it's a one-way trip. Very little selling. You had one moment of selling, maybe in July. I mean, beyond that, can you even find the October lows in the market in this equity, right? You chopped around for a period of time. And well above where you were for all-time highs to end 2021 from MetaShares. We jump around to Boeing. So, Boeing. Interesting when you look at this thing on a longer-term time frame, okay? Boeing gets up to a high, and I'm going to talk about Boeing because, man, the article's out there. Do I still have it pulled up this week? I, let me see if I do. Yeah, I do because it's too tantalizing not to talk about, man. Talked about it this morning. This was out early this morning. Updated this afternoon, it seems. Didn't see the update. But nonetheless, Alaska Airlines... They're thinking the most plausible deal is that it basically just left the Boeing factory without the bolts in place that held the door there, which is why it popped out. Pretty amazing, man. Uh, the suppliers of that fuselage, 
Nonetheless, they had showed up with the door and the bolts just fine. Yeah, nonetheless, they're basically just saying that Bowman's not doing their job. Now, longer term, you know, you have to go back here, right? And this is going back to the original problems with the 737 MAX, okay? Excuse me. This is going back, March of 2019, to the original problems when you sell off. Then we hit COVID, air travel ceases to exist, Boeing especially drops off in pretty dramatic fashion. Now, what did we just do? All we did was we just challenged the 2021 highs, man. So be careful on Boeing shares. They got some real problems, and you actually have it hitting them for the first time to the tune of United CEO talking about literally the United CEO, the biggest carrier in the U.S. that employs the 737 lineup that, that's on hold that's causing them problems. Straw that broke the camel's back. So I would be careful even about 204 on this equity. As reading that one this morning, it was pretty amazing. Just left the, the factory without the bolts they're thinking. And usually they can see if it's wear or tear, right, what it is. So I'm sure the indicators are that the bolts just maybe weren't there. And they were there at one point. All right, let's check back in on that gold contract. Take a little bit of a big picture, man. Gold, we talk about volatility today, man. Gold up to 2056. You're just catching a pop on whatever's going on at 3 o'clock. We'll get into that. You have the tenure continuing, and we have all the expectations coming due down the line for Wednesday in terms of the Fed. You take a little bit of a longer-term picture, things really accelerated back into October when you had lower price, higher yield. That does not seem to be the case right now, folks, okay? Those recent numbers that we're getting, PCE, inflation, 2.9% handles, where the Fed is right now sitting on a level of restrictive policy rate to the five a quarter to 5.5%. I think it's inevitable that this is going to go higher in the longer term. And I think Chairman Powell might have some words to say this, this Wednesday, man. Because if it's not March, it's going to be the meeting after March. Because they're way too high right now with where they are. And of course, the data can change that. And that's what they're going to say as well. But you got to go off the data you have right now. You can't go too far long term. Otherwise, you could say the data could change anything in that in that concept. All right, let's see what else we have moving. Netflix shares extending the gains they got last week up by 1.2 percent yet again today. And they've almost gotten it all back. The Netflix story, the meta story, right? The darlings that got punished and they've almost gotten it all back to the tune of almost quadrupling their shares, both Netflix and meta shares in the span of about a year and a half, which is just remarkable, man. You jump over to NVIDIA. NVIDIA shares up by 2%. Just doesn't stop. 622, you have an all-time high out there of 688. Now, you know, we're going to spend some time later in the program, man. But NVIDIA, okay, let's zoom in on this. Whoops, so you can see the text. NVIDIA in particular, their A to B leg of a potential A to B, C to D is so large that you're talking about 800 bucks if this thing completes, man. You had a very small A to B, uh, excuse me, B to C leg. Some of those other ABCs will jump through them. Even the Qs. Uh, excuse me, which is the NASDAQ 100. You're talking about 19,400. We're only 10% away from that price level. And that would be a complete A to B, C to D. And that A to B leg, folks, you're talking about from about 11,000 to 16,000. You're talking about a 5,000 A to B, C to D. And we're 10% away. All right, folks, stay tuned. We'll be coming back. We're going to talk to our man, Steve Rhodes, when we'll come back after the break. Stay tuned. Don't go away. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors are you ready to take your trading to the next level? 
Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. NN.com. Call now. Toll free at 1 927 6648. Internationally at 727 873 7618. Welcome back, folks. The, the longer we go, the higher this market goes. We got the S&Ps now approaching 49.50. We're at 49.48. S&Ps up 32 points, two-thirds percent to the upside right now. NASDAQ 100 as we speak, 167 points to the upside. That's almost a full percent. And to talk about some of this market action, folks, let's jump over to our man, Steve Rhodes. Folks, you can check out Steve's outstanding newsletter. Head to the front page of TFNN. You're going to see Mastering Probability right on the front page there. You can click on that. You can subscribe, whether you're talking about the monthly price, 149 the six-month price of 695 you save $199 or 22%. The yearly at 1195 you save 593 Every newsletter, folks, comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, so I encourage you to check out some of those longer subscriptions if you're thinking about staying on. And Steve Rhodes, great to talk to you, man. Good afternoon. Hey, Tommy, how you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? Good, good. So we got a hot market, but it looks Oof. like it's going to snow in the Tampa area. It's I, You know, I was pulling up the weather today where I saw, thankfully by me, Steve, we're going to hit about 45 maybe. So I'm not going to get probably any snow, thankfully. But, yeah, I got today. I was uh, this cold, weather. And, and how about the weekend, man? Just amazing weather on Saturday, like 83 degrees, folks, or something amazing. We had Gasparilla around Tampa. I didn't make it, Steve, but we had pool day with Grandpa, so that was cool, too. Oh, um, cool. But, but pretty, but now pretty, 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 it's 83 degrees, man, down here late January. Pretty, And now we're going to get some snow. Why not? Yeah, but it could, did it cool off yesterday? It was cool enough for getting kind of cold. It did. It cooled off. It was um, it was still nice, sunny, but cooled off. Yeah, Saturday yeah, well, was the day, man. It was, yeah. I was watching a little bit of the LPGA tournament because it was just uh, just up the street from you, uh, I think, and uh, uh, and you know, it looked like they were pretty cold, the girls, and and looked like quite a bit of wind that was out there. <laughs> As you know, we got to enjoy some of this cool weather because it gets so hot there, man, pretty quickly. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Now, and what I love this time it was great sports this weekend. But uh, one of the sports. Now you're you're from the north. Are you a skier? Or snowboarding? I, uh, oof, I, you know, I haven't been ages. I was a skier. My dad and I tried snowboarding. It was coming out right as I was like down the end of high school where we'd take those trips. We each tried it a couple times. Man, our yeah. butts got got uh, from falling on the back. We love skiing. I used to do the races. I forget. I loved it. So go ahead. Yeah, yeah. skiing. Yeah. So I, and I used to ski too, but I, I love when the X Games are on. And sure. and they uh, you know they hold them in well they have hold them all around the place but they the X Games in Aspen were on over the weekend and you know there's nothing there's nothing like seeing a beautiful blue sky and all the snow in the mountains and, and it's amazing the balance 
that uh, the those skiers have and the tricks that they do. Uh, Seriously, I'd be dead. I'd be dead on the first uh, the first jump. I would. My back would be breaking in half on the high totally. hear you, man. But I yeah, know totally, totally, totally. So talk Just to get- me. What do you think? This is quite every every time a minute goes by, we got new highs in this market, Steve. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's because of global flow of capital that's uh, coming in here. And we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that. But what I thought, okay. thought we could first do is start with uh, uh, this chart here. And this is a chart. This is a 60 year chart of the S&P 500. So it takes us back to 1946. And typically, uh, January closes higher. And then if we take a look at uh, this chart here, if you look at the lower right hand side, it shows you what the typical average price action is for each month. So this suggests that uh, we could be forming a top here because February uh, typically closes lower. So. January is definitely you know, like we're going to definitely uh, 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 generate a higher close versus December in January. I mean, things would really have to fall off the planet in the next couple of days. And we're approaching sure. one of Bud Rolf's sure. uh, primary trading range boundary lines at the forty nine fifty six. So I heard you. I wasn't watching the markets okay. specifically as we're coming up, but we're pretty close to that right now, I guess. Um, yeah, we're you know, at 49.50 right now in the S&P yeah. futures. Yeah. So how about that? So so what's interesting is prices coming up into what is typically a resistance or can be a support range out there. Right now we're climbing up into it. So this 49.56 area, it's going to be an interest. Now we don't use it right to the penny, right to the tick, but we're approaching that area as we speak right now. And yeah. if we take a look at this presidential cycle, so what I did was I took that 60-year time frame chart, Tommy, and I went ahead. And because we are in 2024, it's a presidential cycle year, and its patterns can be different. Of course, we have fewer nice. um, years to look at out here. There's 19 years worth of data in presidential okay. elections since 64. But what we can see here, oddly enough is that typically uh, right around the end of January, early February, is when the S&P 500 makes its top. Okay. And again, this point us back to that uh, February time frame. If we take a look at the S&P index um, and the SPY and the ES mini, they each have what I refer to as roads meant to indicator signals, price moving higher due with less relative energy. But in order for those to identify a top, we need to see a bearish reversal candle. So whether you're looking at the SPIs, the S&P, or the ES Mini, folks should be watching for, and over the course of the next few days, see if we get some type of bearish reversal candle. If we do, likely we're going to have some type of short-term top. Now, the S&P 500, the SPY, they're each going to form bar number eight of a TD9 count top today. 90% of the time when you get to a successful bar number eight, which is move up in in this last uh, 20 minutes or so has done that. It's triggered bar number eight. 90% of the time, it'll go on and generate a proper bar number nine. So that suggests we could have a top form between today and Wednesday of this week. Now, the ES Mini is one bar behind that. So it might form a top between tomorrow and Thursday of this week. So between now and Thursday, it's just a cautionary time period for us to be looking for a top. Everything's kind of lining up, at least at this stage of the game. Now, if that top unfolds, uh, then price typically moves lower into the middle of March. So we'd be looking for, a, and, and, and with a rally that then typically would last, uh, take us into uh, the September timeframe. If the S&P 500 is going to begin moving lower, this is what I want people to look for, Tommy, is I want them to pay attention to spot volatilics, put a 50-day exponential moving average on that. That is the bottom portion of the screen out here. The top portion is the S&P 500. The, air, the boxes that are in green show you how the S&P 500 trades when the spot volatilics is below the 50-day. The red areas show how the S&P 500 trades when, when, when the spot volatilics is above that. So it's one signal to be looking for. As I've identified nice. that there could be a top forming, you, you wouldn't, you want, you're looking for a confirming signal. And that's one of the sure. confirming signals to be able to look for is that spot volatilics. Now, we talked about the market perhaps, if we do get this top, the market moving lower into the uh, March timeframe. Well, weekly tops, uh, in the S&P 500 typically lead to uh, lower weekly closes for two to four weeks. So this tool that I have on here takes a look at, so the black digits are showing you consecutive higher closes, the red digits, which we're really focused on right now, lower consecutive closes. And so these typically last two to three to two to four bars out there. So if we take a look at that, that happens to line up with us moving into the March 1st timeframe. We talked about the potential for a March low if we do get this January, February high that kicks in. However, 
And a little caveat here, on a monthly basis, we've been moving higher. This is going to be our third consecutive month higher. And so that also is a dance step where we typically can see some type of pullback. And on a monthly basis, you can see this has gone back now over, this is 11 years. So I've taken us back to 2012 out here. So you can see how consistent those pullbacks are. It's kind of cool, really, to know that. I mean, I didn't realize this a year ago or six months ago um, until I started looking at this tool that I had developed and applied it to the charts this way. But when you really look back at it and say, well, that's pretty cool, right? You know, two month pullback is pretty much on average. So this could actually take us into the May time frame. And if we expand the presidential cycle and I just don't do the last 60 years, but I go back to 1928, turns out that May is one of the worst performing months during the presidential cycle. Yeah. And that's also when we get a bottom. So it goes back to that monthly chart. If we do get a top, it's either they're going to make a low in the March time frame or it's going to be in the May time frame. So I didn't get through all the slides, but I think everybody kind of gets the gist of right now. That was great. Looking for. That was great stuff. And as you were talking, we got to 49.56 in the future. Oh, you gotta so love how about it. that? You gotta love it. How about that? Totally. Steve, great to talk to you, man. I Thanks, look forward Tommy. to the program tomorrow as always. And I'll talk you to you bet. soon. OK, Thanks. folks, check it out. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters Letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps up by 36 points right now, and some of that action having to do with higher price, lower yield coming at you. This ahead of Fed Wednesday, Jobs Friday, tech earnings coming at you as well. But the news hits at 3 o'clock, and so this was what was driving that action. So U.S. Treasury cuts the quarterly borrowing estimate to $760 billion. I think that number was originally 816 Yeah. 
So the U.S. Treasury, this is 3 o'clock, check out the markets. That's when some of this action really started accelerating, right? The big worry has been yields may possibly rise. You got duration risk across the board, et cetera, from a fact that our deficit debt is going to push a deluge of supply that would do what? Overrun the market. Now I'm exaggerating to get the point out, right? You get a deluge of supply. The Treasury has to keep pumping it out. What does that do? The deluge of supply means that you're going to have the price go down because they have so much to sell that they have to sell it at cheaper prices, right? If you had a ton of hot dogs to sell, you had to sell a million hot dogs, you might want to lower the price to get them all out to market. Same thing happens with debt. When you're pushing out a lot of debt, you have to bring down the price if you have so much debt that people aren't willing to pay up for it, right? And why would you pay up for it if the Treasury is going to keep plowing money out to that degree? So you have a deluge of supply. The price will drop. That means that yields are rising, right? By the price dropping, we know yields rise. Well, what does that do? It makes borrowing more expensive. So then what do you got to do? It creates a vicious cycle because you got to issue more debt. Well, what happens? You issue more debt, the price goes down. That means yields are rising. That means that debt you're issuing costs you more money. So you, nonetheless, right? Well, what happens? We get a reversal of that. So what happens? The Treasury says we don't need to borrow as much. We're reducing the amount of federal, federal borrowing for the current quarter despite the widening in the fiscal deficit, okay? A reduction unexpected by, by many dealers. This is why you're seeing a little reverberation going on at 3 o'clock right now. Treasury Department cut their net borrowing estimate for January through March to $760 billion from a previous prediction of $816. Right away, that's $60 billion that isn't going to be in the market. Debt managers kept their estimate for the Treasury's cash balance for the end of March at $750. Smaller borrowing need was driven by higher projected net fiscal flows, okay? Having more cash on hand at the start of the quarter than expected. Treasury officials speaking with reporters to decline to offer a breakdown on the improvement in fiscal flows relative to previous expectations. So nonetheless, that's what you get, man. Strategists had anticipated the number was actually going to go up. Yeah, in part due to the fiscal deficit widening in recent months. You're going to hear a lot about this, okay, because this has been in the, the press. This has been driving some of those interest rate concerns, at least to a certain degree. You had one uh, co-head of U.S. rate strategy at J.P. Morgan, Jay Barry. He was way off. How about 855, Jay? No. <laughs> um, they come in at what? 760. He's off by $100 billion, 95 to be fair to Mr. Jay Barry. Uh, nonetheless, so that's where you came from. That wasn't the universal, universal look. Mr. Ira Jersey, they pump their own people. Why not? Chief U.S. interest rate strategist at Bloomberg, uh, he was looking for 700. So on the, on the bottom side. So what happens? They have less supply. And what, what does that mean? That means the price can rise, yields can drop, and the market can love it all, right? Uh, aside from what's going on with the Fed, if the government doesn't have to borrow as much, that's the fundamentals driving it, and that's why you saw some of that action. So you get a little bit of a reverberation, but the market is loving that for sure. And how cool is that that we hit 49.56 from our man, Steve Roach? Check out Mastering Probability, folks, right on the front page of TFNN, right on that number. And as he's, you know, Steve put it, it's not an exact number sometimes, I'd say it's an art, not a science, right? That's the area, but it pegs 49.56 as we're chatting. And, you know, Steve was putting that together. He works hard on some of those presentations and, and what he's going to talk about when he comes home with my dad. Well, at 3 o'clock, this thing was trading at 49.30, and he had 49.56 out there, and we hit it by the time he was done with his interview at 3.25. Pretty cool. Uh, okay, we jump over to the dollar index. So the action at 3 o'clock, what does that do? Well, that's weakening the dollar, okay? Because what do we have? We have the Treasury borrowing less. What is that doing? That's decreasing the yield that's impacting the dollar because if there's decreased yield, not as many people are going to want that decreased yield. So there's going to not going to be the need to procure U.S. dollars to go after that yield. I think it's so cool how all these relationships exist. And once you understand them, it really makes a lot of sense. And not a lot of people, unfortunately, understand them. And they drive everything, which is a real bummer in terms of the education, the financial literacy of what's going on. Okay, what else do we have going on? Yeah, this one's interesting to see how this plays out. I love coffee, man. I had a coffee before I came on the air. I'm on a little bit of a latte kick. I got a latte kick going on. I make an espresso with my Nespresso Virtuoso. Is that the machine? Great machine. Got it from my dad for my birthday like three or four years ago. Love it. 
and then I got a little bit of milk, but nonetheless, so st I wonder if olive oil is going to be the deal. They're trying to make it. I, I often joke, because I love cold brew coffee as well, and Starbucks somehow figured out, you know, first they got the latte kick, so they figured out how to get people who drink coffee every day to convince them that somehow it makes sense to pay 5 or $6 for that coffee beverage when they really couldn't do that if they were just pushing out coffee. So they push people into all these, listen, I love them, okay? It's a great business. And they're going to do it again with olive oil, man. Olive oil infused oleato drinks. Is that how you pronounce it, man? They're launching them in the U.S. stores beginning Tuesday. They previously debuted in select stores across the country and uh, initially met with negative views, but they're pushing it out. So your, your coffee is going to have some olive oil in there. I don't know. I'm a fan of olive oil. I use it with a ton of stuff, man. Starbucks up by 1.2% with the market right now, but they have been having a tough one. You back it up to a three-year weekly. And yeah, just chopping around at about the 50%. You trade lower, beginning of 2022 with the market. You trade up and get almost it all back. And just like that, we're chopping around at 93.90 for Starbucks. Okay. Let's jump around with some of the equities that are coming out with their numbers, man. You take a look at some of these projections, folks, all right? Whoops. We jump over to Google shares. Let me reset that. Now, what's cool is if you go through some of these A to B, C to Ds, folks, we're so close. We're, we're within about 10% of many of the equities completing their A to B, C to Ds, which would probably drive the Qs to complete that A to B, C to D of 19,400. And then what happens there, though? That's what I'm wondering. Man, and how about, you know, I was thinking about this, talking to Steve again. How about the weekly? That there were no notations for two continuous red bars all the way from October because there, there weren't two continuous red bars. We got one red bar. So at some point, you're going to get a pullback, man. We got one weekly red bar from October 30, 23rd, and we're coming into February, folks. Remember that when you just start thinking about the optimism, when we start getting, you know, rate cuts. This market has traded up with one red bar on a weekly basis since October, and we're coming into February. Remember that as you get optimistic that cuts are coming down the line, because this has a lot to do with what's happened in that area. Pretty remarkable. So back to S&Ps. Okay, you're talking about an A to B, C to D. You can do these on your charts, folks, all right? And they're simple numbers in terms of for the A to B, C to D on the S&P. So we're going to look at this, and we're going to talk about the tech stocks when we come back after the break, folks, okay? But check it out because they all line up. S&Ps, you're only talking about about 200 points. It was 200 earlier today. Now it's 175. That is a full completion, and I took the low being where this thing chopped around for four weeks of 3,600. You could cherry pick the low of 3,500 for your A to B, C to D. 3,600 gives you a 1,000 point A to B leg. You take the low, which was back in October of 4,136, and you're talking about about 5,130 and change, and you're at 49.50. We'll take a look at these A to B, C to Ds, folks. We'll take a look at the tech companies. we got a big week of earnings. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. 
Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. I'm O'Brien. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&P up by 33 points right now. We're backing off a bit from that acceleration up to 49.56 all-time highs right now in the S&P. You got the NASDAQ 100 up by 164. That's an all-time high print on the Dow, isn't it, as well? That's an all-time high print on the Dow, as well, 38,441. Pretty amazing we got such round numbers coming up, right? 5,000, 20,000, 40,000, S&P, NASDAQ 100, and Dow. Russell's got to get back to 2,500 just to kind of be back at the all-time highs. Okay, so we have the biggest companies in the world coming out with their numbers this week. And check out this statistic out here from Yahoo Finance. Six companies expected to lead the S&P 500 in earnings. If you just take Apple, Amazon, Google, Meta, Microsoft, and NVIDIA, okay. Have we already had NVIDIA out? Or are they out next week? I'll pull them up. Don't think they're out this week. We get AMD out this week. Let me pull up the Tigers then. But check it out. This, excuse me, this is talking about Earnings growth year over year for the fourth quarter, which is what these companies are reporting right now. Those six companies in the S&P 500 together represent 53.7% growth in earnings fiscal year from last year, fourth quarter, this year, fourth quarter. The other 494 S&P 500 companies combined for earnings growth of negative 10.5%. So, yes, expectations are high for these tech companies to deliver. That's called putting it lightly, right? You talk about it, man. That's amazing. 53.7% earnings growth. Yeah, S&P earnings growth year over year, 53.7. Man, remarkable. Okay, so jumping around to some of these tech companies. Give me one second while I jump around here. Just had. Okay, here we go. Now, for what day we're coming. Okay. Tuesday, we get AMD. Let's go to AMD. I don't think I have the A to B. Yes, I do. Yeah, they completed it as well. Look at this thing. All right, we put these on a weekly, and I zoom in on the action from when this market bottomed out, late 2000, yeah, 22. A point of AMD, about 60. We go to our B point up here, about 132. Your D point just got completed on AMD shares, okay? They're out with their numbers after the bell on Tuesday. We also get Google on Tuesday as well. Google and Microsoft. So AMD, Google, Microsoft on Tuesday. You take a look at Google. 170 is the projection here. What's so remarkable is we could get it this week, right? This is a 10% pop. Well, we've seen Netflix, et cetera, companies even of this size, they can pop when you really get a move of this tune. A point back in February, your B point up there in the highs before you pulled back in October. The cool thing about that one on, on Google shares, that brings you right back to the 382. And look at this thing, man, right? And where have we run? And then we've run topside from that October 23rd low, which was the 382 pullback of your acceleration off the lows. Your A to B, C to D brings you to about 170 for Google shares. We jump over to Microsoft. 
Microsoft does the same exact thing. They go A point, they go B point, they pull right back to the 3A2, a little bit of a different time frame. That low made in September, you accelerate. Microsoft A to B, C to D potentially brings you to about 457. Okay. Now, we jump to Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday is not a big one. We're going to have Fed Day on Wednesday, but we don't have an earnings day. We do get companies. We get Boeing out with their numbers. I'm just jumping around. This is not the tech world. They get some real problems, as we talked about there. MasterCard's a different story, man. Credit card business, they are on fire along with American Express. Now, let's just jump. We do get Qualcomm on Wednesday, okay? But let's jump right into Thursday's action. What do we get? We get Apple shares. Now, Apple, what's interesting here is they haven't broke the B point. Okay, Apple had the same A point to B point. You get your C point bull back, but be careful here, man. Apple's been very weak compared to the other tech companies since you've been shopping around near this, what, almost 200, 199.62, but you see it versus the other equities, right? The other equities did an A to B leg, and if Apple was close to finishing that A to B leg, you're talking about almost 70 points, which brings you to 240. So if Apple was just on par with Microsoft, Google, this thing would be trading at 220, something like that. Not even close. So Apple's been underperforming. Be careful there. Meta doesn't apply. Meta is its own animal. There's no pullback there. Okay. You can't do an A to B, C to D leg on this type of a chart. 88 bucks up to 401. Uh, nonetheless, that thing trades higher. Pretty dramatic fashion there. So you see how these equities, and then we jump to the indices. Okay. As we wrap this up, you jump to the Qs. You have an A to B leg, exact same time frame. Okay. Your A point, 11,000. Your B point, 16,000. Come back down to almost 14,000, 14 and change. So your D point would be 19 and change. If you get the type of moves that are within the equities for the A to B, C to Ds, they're going to line up exactly with the NASDAQ 100. And it makes sense because they're driving it. It's the same exact story with what we're talking about, the graphic I just showed you previous, where they're all the earnings growth. So pay attention to these equities. That's the point, man. All right. And maybe we do have that one more slide up. But the other side of that is I think we're going to get that one more push up, and then I think things are going to be a little bit difficult at those price levels. I think we're going to hit the nice 5,000. We're only 1% we're only away from 5,000 in the S&Ps. I mean, Basil Chapman loves those round numbers, the market. He loves them because the market loves them, right? It makes sense. Dow, up 170. We're right near 40,000. Those are the two big ones, right? NASDAQ 100, not as much of an indice that most follow, but you're talking about a Dow that makes headlines for some reason. OK, on the nightly news and you're talking about an S&P nearing a nice 5000 and both of them would complete your A to B, C to D's. You'd complete them in the equities and then you'd at least have, you know, some chopping around or whatever it is from that time point. Where does the Russell go from here? You're up by one point five percent. You want some volatility. Check out that Russell. Yeah. Let's check out the yields as we continue to chop around right now. Taking in that news from the Treasury. We're going back up. Higher price, lower yield. The 10 year right now up by 20 ticks. We keep our eye on the dollar. All right, well, it seemed to stem those losses a bit. We're at 103.46, basically where we were almost at about 7.45 a.m. this morning on the dollar. You jump over to that gold contract, gold, up by 14 bucks at 2,050. Great time to check out the gold report, folks. 2,050 in that gold contract. You put it on a daily. You accelerate up to 21.52. Can't believe that was December. Do you remember that high? I remember that high, man. That high was made after hours. And I remember my dad saying, yeah, I don't, you know, I, I wake up golds through the roof to 21.52, but it's already given up because it was overnight. And to his credit, I never say, no, nah, it's never good when it does it overnight. You want to do it when, you know, market participants are playing, right? You want to do it when the market hours are open. You want, you don't want some light volume high. And guess what? Yeah, they, are, you know, traded from 21.52 down to 2,000. But great time to check out the gold report, folks. New issues on Monday. And the S&P's holding pretty steady right now, up 31 points at 49.47. Friday, we get non-farm payrolls, folks. We're going to talk a little bit about that when we get back. We got non-farm payrolls, and uh, I, don't know, I guess we can almost fit in right now. You're looking at a number of 175,000 is expected. 216 was the prior. Unemployment rate, they're looking for a slight rise, 3.8% versus 3.7%. Um, average hourly earnings, they're going to be watching that one dramatically as well. You're looking for a rise of 0.3% expected. The prior number was 0.4. Okay, so these are the numbers you got to lock in, man. We'll see where they go. 
Uh, that, of course, on Friday, though, after Fed Wednesday. So Chairman Powell, he'll be speaking on Wednesday, and then we'll get those job numbers on Friday. A lot of action this week. We got one more segment, folks. Don't go away. We'll take a look at some other equities that are moving right now. Still time for a call. If you want to call in, 877-927-6648. Stay tuned, folks. I'll be right Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN. Educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. You're going to have the S&P closing at all-time highs. You're going to have the Dow Jones Industrial Average closing at all-time highs. That'll be hitting the nightly news, as it always does. And this ahead of Fed Wednesday, folks, and you jump over. So if you're not in the Tiger's Den, folks, head on over to the front page of TFNN. If you're watching us on YouTube, we love it. Subscribe to our page on YouTube, folks. Make sure you get notifications whenever we go live as well. You can check out all the video archives we do there. But come on over to the Tiger's Den, folks. I just watched uh, post a link to the Fed Watch tool from the CME, and check this out. I mean, this is where we're talking about right now. So this is the meeting date we're talking about. You have the meeting coming up right now. They actually price in a, uh, what, a 2.1% probability. Yeah, about a 2% probability. It's not going to happen, folks, okay, uh, that they would actually be cutting at this meeting. The numbers, when they really start to get real, though, it's about a 48% chance the market's pricing in a March cut. You're talking about in May, you're up to 89%, and by June, you're at 100%. The only question when you're at June is whether they've already cut twice or even three times. 
as you go down the line here. Okay, we're going left. So you can see pretty cool. Right now, okay, we're at five and a quarter to 5.5%. At the January meeting, 98% chance we stay where we are, 2% chance we go down. March meeting, 52% chance we stay where we are, 46% chance we go down. By the time you get to May, there's only an 11% chance we're staying where we are. And there's actually a 36% chance that by May, we're down twice. Yeah, I had to stop myself, right? And by the time you get to June, it's saying three times. By the time you get to July, you could be down four times with a 32% chance. So you can see, check it out in the Tiger Stand, folks. We get to find out on Wednesday, man. That's the coolest part. And what do we get? Then we get tech earnings on Tuesday. We get them on Thursday. Remember the type of growth that they're looking folks for, folks. And we're going to finish this up with your weekly acceleration. Because remember, we got one weekly red bar going back to the late October. So no matter what they're cutting, folks, remember these types of accelerations. At some point, you got to get a pullback, man. Uh, but this market... Strong like bull. Folks, thanks for tuning in. Stay tuned. I'll come back for the update. I'll see you tomorrow at 9 in the morning. Thanks so much, folks. Have a great night. See you tomorrow.